Need for Speed Payback car list. No, 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 no. Need for Speed Payback supercar list. News flash douchebags. Okay, so I'll be totally honest. Super slash hypercars is probably the car type that I am least enthusiastic about. That's no fault of Need for Speeds. I guess it's more so due to my own personal car taste changing as I've grown from a pickney with an afro in dungarees into adulthood. I do have a selection of supercars down the years which I've gained huge respect for. The original Ford GT, the Ferrari 458, Lamborghinis, Miura and Gallardo models and McLaren's F1. But none of them really connect with me to the point where I go looking for them in car magazines and pulling my tinkle out for a quick stroke. And I think the main reason for that is because number one, financially, I'm not in the big boy leagues to even consider buying one as a reality. And number two, I seem to have grown more fondness with the idea of buying a standard car and building it up from an old banger into the darling of the bull. So I guess that leads us nicely into taking a look at what the current supercar list for Need for Speed Payback is looking like based on what has been put out so far. So as always, this list is not confirmed as final. There is still plenty of time for Ghost to make extra additions, but even at this early, well I guess it's not exactly early as the game is out in around 8 weeks, but it doesn't matter because even at this stage, it makes for some interesting discussion. So first things first, Aston Martin, the DB11. The Aston Martin DB11 is a Grand Tourer manufactured by Aston Martin themselves since late 2016, after its debut at the Geneva Motor Show in March of the same year. It's the successor of the DB9, which had been launched in 2004. The DB11 is Aston Martin's first turbocharged series production car, being powered by a twin turbocharged 5.2 litre V12. It punches out 600 brake horsepower and manages to go from 0 to 60 in just 3.9 seconds with a top speed of 200 miles per hour. The Vulcan is a high performance track car also made by Aston Martin. It features a ridiculous 7 litre V12 punching out 805 brake horsepowers a 6 speed sequential gearbox, a top speed of 224 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 time of only 2.9 seconds. As only 24 units will be produced, the limited edition Vulcan has a price tag of a mind boggling $2.3 million, but owners will be able to keep their car even though its attendance at track days must be approved by Aston Martin beforehand. Moving on, Jaguar and the F-Type R. The F-Type R replaces the F-Type V8S as being the top of the line model. Also available as a roadster, the F-Type R boasts more power from the supercharged 5 litre V8 with an electronic limited slip differential. With the coupe, the increased rigidity gained from the fixed roof propelled its praises for handling and design. Koenigsegg. What if I told you there was a car out there with only one gear within its transmissional setup? What if I then told you that no matter what you own or what you have driven, this one gear based car would destroy it point blank period? The Regera is an electric hybrid car developed and manufactured by Koenigsegg. Only 80 units will be built making it the most produced model by Koenigsegg and each is sold for approximately $1.9 million. The rear wheels of the Regera are powered by a combination of 5 litre twin turbocharged V8s producing 1,800 brake horsepower, all of which is managed by a single gear transmission. Let's hop over to Lamborghini. The Lamborghini Aventador LP700-4 sounds like some sort of fax machine photocopy or whatever, it doesn't matter because this thing is a 690 brake horsepower mid-engine supercar that succeeds the Lamborghini Murcielago. 
its monocoque is composed of carbon fiber. Now, Lamborghini began production of the car in the fall of two autumn of 2011. The spec sheet reads 6.5 litre V12, 509 foot pounds of torque, 2.8 seconds for 0 to 60, a 7 speed sequential gearbox, and a top speed of 220 miles per hour. Because of its low weight and sensitive steering, the Aventador is capable of making quick turns at high speeds without losing grip. The Lamborghini Diablo SV which stands for Super Veloce, is an upgraded model of the Lamborghini Diablo. The engine power output of the 5.7 litre V12 was increased to 510 bhp. Super Veloce is a title given to Lamborghini's highest performance models. The Super Veloce came with an adjustable rear spoiler and other exterior changes such as a black panel between the rear lights as standard. An optional SV logo could be placed on each side of the vehicle as well. Moving on, Pagani. The Pagani Hira BC is a track orientated variant of the Pagani Hira. The initials BC refer to the late Benny Caiola, a friend of Horacio Pagani and the company's first customer. With a 6 litre twin turbocharged V12, 740 brake horsepower, a mid engine rear wheel drive setup with a 7 speed transmission. It's no wonder only 20 examples were planned for sale and all were sold for approximately $2.5 million. Right, let's talk Porsche. The Porsche 911 Carrera S or 991 as it's called by some is currently the technologically most advanced and fastest performing Carrera S production model to date. The 991 is offered with a 7 speed manual gearbox and a 7 speed PDK automatic transmission. It has a longer wheelbase than the 997. The anti-roll bar on the 991 utilizes hydraulic cylinders enabling better handling performance. The Porsche 911 GT3 RS is a track orientated Porsche 991, first shown at the 2015 Geneva Motor Show. It produces more power than that of the GT3 991. Now various improvements were made to the RS model over the previous GT3 with increased downforce, marked up grip and sharper handling being the top three points of advancement. The altered components of the RS have lightened it by 10 kilograms over the GT3, improved its aerodynamics to near motorsport downforce, improved stability and a flatter torque curve. The 2013 Porsche 918 Spyder is the production version of Porsche's 918 Spyder concept from 2010. Its 4.6 litre V8 produces 600 brake horsepower, which is aided by two electric motors, one in the front producing 129 brake horsepower and one in the rear producing 149. The car can be powered by both the electric motors and the V8, or the V8 only, or exclusively by electric motors. So you get to choose, which is great. Right, sticking with Porsche, and as you can see, they've got a lot of entries here. The Cayman GT4. Now this is a track orientated sports car based on the mid-engined Cayman 981C model generation. The 3.8 litre flat six engine was borrowed from the 991 Carrera S, although in a slightly detuned configuration. The front suspension, several parts from the rear axle and brakes are derived from the 991 GT3. A modified front bumper and fixed rear wing have been applied to increase downforce. And that is the list so far. So at the moment, I'd say what we have is what I will consider a decent list. Now, being a Brit, I'm especially happy to see us represented by way of Aston Martin and Jaguar being brought to the eating table. And I'm really intrigued to see how the Vulcan fares in a one-on-one -on -one against the Regera. The Regera will probably beat it, but it will still be fun and good to watch regardless. But fellas, lads, chaps, mandem, and girls, of course, or girl, it's probably just one girl in the world watching this video. There is an elephant in the room of which I know you guys have already spotted. A big one in the shape of a missing yellow badge with a black prancing horse 
neatly engraved onto a scarlet red car of some sort. Yes, I admit, so far this list does feel a bit hollow without any entries from the finest supercar maker in the world, Ferrari. Now, I'm unsure whether or not this is due to some sort of licensing situation or maybe it's just Ghost holding a wee bit back from us as they like to do. I mean either way as soon as any information drops then I'll be sure to cover it. And with all things said that just about wraps things up for another video folks. As always thank you so much for coming out to check the video. Thank you so much for listening. What are your guys thoughts on the current cars we have released in terms of supercars? Is, are your favourites on there? Are your favourites missing? Are there any additions you'd like to see? Those of you that are British are you happy that there's been an inclusion of Jaguar and Aston Martin this time around? I mean I certainly am. And also if any of you have any information in relation to what I mentioned about Ferrari then please drop it in the comment as I'm interested to know. Now I'm also thinking about putting together an analysis of the German cars we have in the game. I say German cars, Porsche is a German car, I know that, but I'm more so talking about the European tuners, so obviously Mercedes, BMW and Audi. If you'd like to see that, please hit the thumbs up button to show me that you'd like a breakdown on that. Also, if it's your first time around here, I wish you a born welcome. Hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications on so you know when the next video is about to drop. And uh, as always, huge thank you to all the new subscribers that have come through over the past couple of weeks. Don't forget to check out the Auto Ball magazine for all your latest car reviews and head-to-head -head showdowns and also don't forget to check out the Let's Play we got going for Need for Speed Underground 2 in HD. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, I'll see you when the next video comes out. Take it easy. Peace. Do you like car reviews? Do you check out power tests? Are you a fan of head-to-head -head showdowns? How about having them all tied together in one convenient place? Welcome to the Autoborn Magazine, your one-stop shop for all of the above, presented on a weekly basis with quality content, clean-cut commentary and cars to suit everyone's pocket. What happened when the 370Z went up against the original 240? Was the American muscle car misunderstood by the British? Should you buy the brilliantly stupid John Cooper Works Mini? All questions and more will be answered as part of the Autoborn magazine. Check it out now.